Thank you for stopping by the Computer Programming University where the first step is always to smile because learning should be fun. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the most common Unix commands that you should know. These are very common Unix commands for a beginner. You're just getting into working on a Unix terminal and these are the commands I recommend that you know how to use and be familiar with. I'd like to make one note before I get started. If you watch this video and you enjoy this video, if it helps you out, I would really appreciate it if you go ahead and click on the subscribe button. It just takes you one second and it's free. It's just as easy as that. And if in the future you don't like the content, feel free to go ahead and unsubscribe. But just, I, I do ask that you let me know though why it is that you unsubscribed if that's possible so I can improve the content because this experience here, I want it to be the best possible experience for you. So let's get right into it. So first command is ls. Let's see where we are. ls gives us a list. Show me what's in this directory where I am. And what is this directory? Where am I? So I know what's here. I see a bunch of files. File 1, file 1 copy, file 2, file 2 copy, and there's a directory called new dir. But where am I exactly? We can see here it says forward slash test, and I'm going to see if I can zoom this in. This is a little bit of a different terminal here, so you can see better. There you go. So that should be a appropriate. So we can see it says here forward slash test and the tilde actually indicates my home directory. But what's the actual full path of where I am? PWD gives us that present working directory. Present working directory is forward slash home forward slash Carlisle forward slash test. So now that's the exact location of where we are. We have found ourselves. We don't need any GPS. All right. So again, LS to show us the contents here show us what is located at, at this actual location and now moving on let's actually do something with the contents here using another command called cat which is catenate think of cat as merging so if you want to merge multiple files together you can use a cat command I can actually use the asterisk key to say merge everything here so all the files that are here merge them into one and if I hit enter it's actually going to just display everything on the screen now since there's a lot of stuff in here Actually, it's just one file, the long file that I created, which has a lot of stuff in it. So you can't see anything. Like, it all scrolled off. i got to scroll up to see everything. It's too much to fit on my display here. So I'll show you another command. First, well, two other things. I'll show you how to do a pipe. So basically, right above the Enter key, you have a line that's kind of broken in the middle. Got a little, it's broken in the middle, right? And we call that the pipe. And basically, what we say is you pipe something. So cat asterisk pipe to more. Basically what we're saying is take the output or the results of this command and use that as the input for this command. What does the more command do? That allows us to kind of breathe. You know, we got all this data. It's too much. It can't fit on the screen. Don't just you know, throw it past me so fast. I'm not an Android. I can't read the text flying by so fast. Page by page. So you see it says more on the bottom and it's blinking down there. If I hit the space bar, there you go. I can go page by page and read it like a human, which you are. I assume you're watching this video, you're a human. So you can't read the way it, it did it the first time. And again, without that command, this is what you get. This is, you know, where's all the rest of the stuff? I can't read all of that stuff. So that's another command. There's also another command which is very similar, which is less. Less is something, something that I use sometimes when I'm looking at really large files on an active production server and I'm concerned about how much memory I'm using up and stuff like that. Less allows me to see the file in kind of chunks. So, and also I can search. Rather than me just doing page by page, you see I got the little semicolon. That's similar to when you're using a text editor like VI or VIM. So I can do things like forward slash, and I can type in, you see the word top right here? So I can type in TOP, and it's going to show me every occurrence of TOP. If, if I had N, and 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 and, and that's, going to, that's going to keep showing me every single occurrence of whatever string it is that I'm searching for. And I'll show you where that's coming from or, or where that's very similar to. If I go to long file, VIM, by the way, is text editor. If I use the VIM text editor to, to look at that file, so this is an editor, just imagine like, like a notepad in Windows. So here's my editor, I'm actually looking at the contents of that file. Now if I use the forward slash, just like before, I type in top, you can see I'm doing the same kind of search. And, and, and you know, that's going to move me to the next, 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 every occurrence of whatever I'm looking for. Co uh, shift, colon. Uh, and then we do WQ to write and quit if we save things, but we didn't actually change anything, so I can just hit Q to quit and get out of there. 
All right, moving right along. How do you change directory? So in here, we noticed there was a directory called new dir right here. How do I change directory? cd, change directory. And I can type in n and uh, tab. What that does is it looks for anything, any directory that begins with the letter n. There's only one, so it automatically fills in the rest for me. So instead of me sitting here typing n e w t t d i r, I can't even spell, even though it's right in front of me. But anyway, so that's it. cd. Uh, and, uh, new dir enter boom we're in the directory amazing another little trick cd dot dot means go backwards in the tree so we're in new D I'm pointing at the screen you can't even see that uh, we're in new dir and I want to go back to test so I can type in change directory cd space dot dot and that's gonna take me back one amazing look at that so easy all right so moving along so we had a bunch of files here and if I do if I add some options to ls like LTR, which I use a lot. So that's going to be the list format in a reverse format in terms of time. Like you see here, May 8th on the top, May 9th on the bottom. So it's, it's ordering it by time. All right. So, and it's doing it in reverse order. So that's, that's what it is, list by time and in, in reverse. All right. So therefore, what that does is the latest file is on the bottom. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to actually change the mode of these files. So permissions and things like that. Like you can see here on the left, it shows you read, write, read, write, read. And those are different permissions. In another video in the future, I'm going to show you what those mean and how to, how to work with that. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you CHMOD change mod, which allows me to change the permissions on files. I can do, for example, 777. So I'm saying change mod, and that's the settings I want to use, 777. And then what am I doing it to? Let's Let's do that to uh, let's let's say file. Uh, what file am I going to change? I think I already did this on most of the files here. Let's try director two. So let's do that. So we're going to do dir director two. So now take note of how it looked here, right? And now now when I do a directory here, we we'll do it again, and we can do a comparison. So if I scroll up here. And you can see the color changed as well. Before it was read, write, read, write, read. Now it's read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. So I just changed the permissions on that file simply by using the change mod command. Now I'm going through this very quickly. This is just kind of a guide. It's a reference. You can watch this video in the future just for reference and things like that. Uh, I'm going to put an index in the video as well. But the main thing is I'm just, because if you're new, you don't know what commands you should know, shouldn't know. And you can kind of dive into a random Unix book and get buried and just overwhelmed. Or I can simply present to you the commands that you should know, give you a quick overview of the commands, and then you either look at future videos. Hopefully, you're going to subscribe to the channel. You're going to see future videos where I'm going to go into more detail about these different commands. Or you can actually do the research yourself with my guidance. I'm kind of giving you a syllabus. These are the commands you should know. If you want to know more about the commands, go beyond this video and do the research either on my channel or otherwise. All right, so bear that in mind. I'm moving very quickly, but that's why. I just want to expose you to the things that you should know. Moving right along, date. We want to know what the date is. There's the date. And the thing about date is you can change the format to anything you want. I don't know about that, but you can definitely change the format to a lot of different things. So, for example, with different syntax, I can do things like plus, percent, capital D. And there you see I'm getting a different format. Up here it was like Friday May, da, 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 as you can see, and it's very different here. Now I can do a lowercase d, and now I'm getting 9, so I'm getting the 9th of May. I'm just getting that day, and there's also I can do a. I mean, there's a lot of different options. That's giving me the day, shorthand, you know, or, or spelt out, a lot of different options. So depending on what you're trying to do with your script or, or whatever you're trying to do, whatever wacky stuff you're trying to do, you can, you can do it here with date in terms of, you know, what date format do I want to use. It's that simple. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're running down here. We're almost done with this video, but we're going to take a quick break. I'll be right back in 30 seconds. And we're back. And we are back. So let's get right into it. So we just did date moving right along. We have the echo command. I can say echo. Uh, thanks for subscribing to my channel. Yeah. And look what it did. It echoed. Echo, it's like an echo. So you say it, you know, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for subscribing. I think you get the point. 
So let's move right on along to the next one. You have FTP. Basically, FTP, that's how you can, you can transfer files from remote servers. Like, you can download and upload files. I think most of you are probably familiar with FTP. Well, you can just simply type in FTP and, and, and use the syntax. If you, don't know how to, if you don't know how to use it, you have man or manual pages. That's going to give you instructions. I can type in man, FTP, and then I have all the instructions I need about the syntax and all this kind of stuff. It can be a little overwhelming at times, so sometimes you have to do your own Google research to get more information. But this is a nice, good, quick reference. Man and the command name whatever command you need so man actually is another command that I'm just showing you which is actually one of the best commands to know because it tells you about all the commands and if you do a man man little secret there now you're going to get information about man itself and different options and all this kind of stuff so keep that in mind moving along head and tail heads and tails we're not playing games here I am teaching you all about unix why what's this heads and tail thing let's do cat let's do long file and if we just do that we're gonna get all this stuff as we saw before it just takes up too much space what if i only wanted to see the top lines i'm gonna pipe it to head and i just want to say show me the first 10 lines and actually let's add an a to it that's how i spell head i don't know how you spell it but there you go now i'm just getting the first top 10 lines or I can say the first top five lines. Let's clear the screen. Clear is another command. Gets everything off the screen there. And now this is the first the top five lines. Obviously, the lines are very long. My font size is very big, so it doesn't really look like five lines. So let's do two lines, so it's maybe a little bit more clear, hopefully. So there you go. These are the top two lines only. Now, the inverse of that is, what if I want to see the last two lines? I can use tail in the very same format. Now, another thing I can do is, if I'm using a file that's being updated while I'm looking at it. I can do tail dash F. And what that's going to do is, rather than just going back to the prompt, it's going to stay in here and it's going to keep updating me on the file as it's getting updated. So I'm going to see the file updating and updating and updating and updating. So that's a nice thing to know. Moving along, grep. So let's say you wanted to search this file, this long file. I want to look for a string. I want to tell me if there's any occurrence of the word top in that file, long file. Yes, there are quite a few occurrences, and you can see they're in red, which is very nice. How many times does it occur in that file? Dash C, give me a count. So it, it occurs six times in the file. Um, what if I typed in top? I wasn't sure how it was spelled in terms of case. It doesn't come up, but if I had done a dash I, then I wouldn't have to be concerned about the case because it's case insensitive. Now, in another video, I'm going to go over grep in a lot of details, but you get the idea. Grep allows you, and grep stands for global regular expression print. So basically, you are searching globally, so all the lines in the file, for a regular expression. In this case, I'm just searching for the string top, but I can do other things. I'll show you an example in a bit and then print it out. Print out whatever you find in this search. That's basically coming from the old EX days. That is your homework. Look up what EX is in the context of Unix and learn something for once. Moving on. So, um, and I want to show you, I want to show you this other thing here. So I talked about regular expressions. We'll do another video that goes in a lot of detail about, about regular expressions. Not in this video, but just want to show you a little something, something. So let's say we wanted to look for, what's a good example? Okay, I see, I see a pattern here. Let's, let's, let's just give this a shot. So I'm going to look for something that begins with letter A through K. And then uh, let's say uh, T-I-N in that file. So we can see we got Latin, we got extracting, uh, and then extracting again. So that's a regular expression. This is what I did. I put a range of characters. Show me, show me, show me A through K, any letter A through K, lowercase, and then T-I-N. So rather than me typing in something super, super complicated, I'm just typing in a range. I'm declaring a range here using this regular expression, which is a really, really cool trick. All right, we are running out of time, so I'm going to have to do a part two on this video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this, and this is very informative to you. Uh, these are great commands that you should learn. You're going to want to save this video in your favorites and refer to it in the future, and subscribe.
Thank you for watching. You're at the Computer Programming University.